How do? My name is Andrew Hancock and I am a VMware technical architect from Yorkshire in the United Kingdom. I have worked with VMware since their birth in 1998. So that has been over 24 years I have been working with the VMware product catalog. Some of my close colleagues say if you cut Andy in half it reads VMware like a stick of rock from Blackpool. I have now written 134 articles and recorded 30 hours of VMware vSphere videos for Experts Exchange and received 40 Experts Exchange awards over the last 10 years working with the Experts Exchange community. I am currently the overall number one point earner in the Hall of Fame at Experts Exchange. I am honoured to have been accepted into the VMware vExpert programme since 2011 and more recently made a VMware vExpert Pro for the last three years. And welcome back to another episode of Hancock's VMware Half Hour. And again, um, today you find me in front of the uh, VMware, v VMware vCR vCenter 8 interface management console. And today we're going to have a little look at templates, real templates. Um, I know that some people actually call um, the configuration um, when you create a virtual machine as the template. And I have actually in previous videos been sort of concerned. I don't actually really like that word because I think that it can be confused with the actual function of templates that actually exist within VMware vCenter Server 8. And I have touched on this previously. Uh, that once you've actually got into, once you've got to a position uh, whereby you've installed um, your your virtual machine from your ISO that you've uploaded to your data center, uh, you've you've fully patched it using um, the update facility within Microsoft Windows, for instance. Um, you can actually use that particular virtual machine as what we often refer to as the golden master, the the golden master that is going to be the baseline template uh, for you to deploy uh, very, very quickly so that you no longer have to basically mount that ISO anymore. You never have to go through that boring uh, function of answering all those questions and setting up the virtual machine. Uh, you can let VMware vCenter server uh, do all that heavy lifting, uh, deploy the operating system, which is already fully patched. Uh, it already has VMware tools included because you've installed it. It's already using the VMX Net3 driver. Um, and you can then also run sysprep, um, generate a new um, SID for the virtual machine, and you can automate the functionality of joining it to the domain. So it's all ready for you to log into. And that's what we're going to do today in this episode. So we're back in the we're back at the lab again. And I'm just going to tidy a few things up very, very quickly. Uh, we finished with our Windows 11 um, test VMX uh, Net 3 machine. So I'm just going to do right click and delete from disk and dispose of it. We don't need that anymore. Now, what I have done um, is I've actually turned this Windows Server 2022 temporarily into a uh, Microsoft Windows domain controller. Uh, so I'm just going to rename that to reflect its real name now. Uh, so I've called it E-Lab DC1 as it's our first domain controller. So I'm just going to I'm just going to rename that correctly. Um, and here's our Windows Server 2022 um, virtual machine that we created. If I just check back, look, look losing using. Um, Edward Richmond's awesome resource list. So we actually basically did that in part 12, um, installing our first virtual machine. And I showed you in part 14 how to install VMware tools. And in the last part 18, um, we did a 45 minute session on using um, the VMFX, VMX Net 3 driver and interface. And I have actually recently noticed now that in the latest Windows updates that are available from Microsoft, uh, again, um, they are actually issuing the VMX Net3 driver. Uh, I think it's at 1.9.11 uh, now, which is the version that you may remember actually ships uh, in VMware Tools 12.1.6, which is available from the packages um, website uh, that I showed you in part 18 as well. So, OK, let's let's get on. 
So how do we create a template? Well, we've already patched Windows Server 2022. It contains all the patches that we want it to do uh, for our golden master. So it's nicely updated. So I'm just going to right click this particular virtual machine and I'm going to click template and I'm going to click convert to template. And I'm going to say, yes, I want to convert that to a template. Now you will notice um, across the top here, and I haven't really mentioned these before here, but you've got three icons that sit across the top here. The first one uh, is your inventory and uh, often referred to as hosts and clusters. The second one is referred to as virtual machines and templates. Then you've got data stores and then you've got networking. So if you click uh, the networking icon, uh, you can see all your networks that exist in your uh, current inventory. And if I click data stores, then you again, you can see all the data stores in your inventory. And if I click the virtual machines and templates, then again, you will see the virtual machines and you will also see the templates. Now, maybe not obvious, but the actual icons are actually different. So if you look at the Windows Server 2022, this little icon here actually shows that it's it's a template. Now, one of the first things I want to do is I actually want to create a, a guest custom OS specification. It's a bit of a mouthful, that, isn't it? And I'm going to select policies and profiles. And I'm going to select VM customization specifications. And I'm going to click new. Now, this is going to be specifically for our Windows Server 2022 machines so i'm just going to basically paste that into the description it's windows i want it to generate a new security identifier so i want it to generate a new sid each time that we deploy this it's going to generate a new sid for the virtual machine and i'm going to click next i'm going to put the owner's name so i'm going to put my name um uh, so whatever you would normally basically put in the description for or whatever you would put in for the owner name um, and organization name. So I'm just going to put our organization name in here. Uh, followed by next. Um, now I'm going to use the virtual machine name. Um, so when we deploy the template in a minute, the virtual machine name that exists in our inventory uh, will be used as the OS name. So that actually saves you again the trouble of actually basically having to log into the virtual machine, uh, change the name of the virtual machine, shut down, restart and, and log in again. Um, so uh, so I'm going to use the virtual machine name as the computer name. Uh, I'm going to click next. Um, I don't need to provide um, any product key at the moment so i'm going to bother with that so i'm going to click next uh so administrator password for the virtual machine so i'm just going to specify i'm not going to automatically log on as administrator followed by next i'm going to select my time zone sorry about that that's last pass I'm trying to record everything so i'm going to select my time zone followed by next uh, I'm not going to want to run any commands. Um, and here, this is where you can actually specify um, the, your network information. Now, you may just actually uh, want to select use DHCP. Um, I'm going to make some subtle changes here because what I want to do is I actually want to force a DNS name. Um, so I'm going to use 192.168.182. 105. Um, now, the reason I'm using um, that IP address is because that's the IP address of our domain controller, which is also our DNS for this domain as well. And our, I'm going to specify a DNS suffix of ee-lab.com. I'm going to add that followed by OK. Um, now I want to join it to the e-lab. And here 
I'm going to specify a username that has permission in the domain. So we have an account called add to domain, which has the the correct rights to be able to add workstations and servers to the domain. So followed by next. Um, just going to ignore LastPass. OK, so that looks correct. Um, it's Windows. It's going to generate a new security ID, a SID. My owner name, Andrew Hancock, Cyrus Computer Consultants Limited. We're going to use the machine name. I'm not going to specify a product key. We're not going to log in as an administrator. Our time zone. We're going to do a network type called custom. We're going to use DHCP. Um, Windows Server, domain ee-lab, and the username is add to domain, followed by finish. So that's our, cust our VM customization specification or our guest OS customization specification, specifically for Windows Server 22. Um, but you can actually generate others for Windows Server 2016, 2019, Windows 11, Windows 10, etc. So I'm going to go back to our inventory. Um, so I'm going to go back to, I'm going to click inventory and I'm going to click our, on back to our templates. So how do we deploy the template? Well, quite sick, quite quickly, we can just right click and select new VM from this template. Um, so we're going to give it a name. So I'm going to call it ee-lab-dc2. So this is the virtual machine name that's going to appear in our inventory here. But the deployment of the template is also going to use that name, ee-lab-dc2, to rename our guest OS, our computer name. So ee-lab-dc2 is going to appear inside the virtual machine. And it's also going to join the domain as well. Um, so I'm going to specify the, the data center, followed by next. I'm going to specify the host name. Again, we don't have DRS running at the moment, so I have to manually place where I want the virtual machine to be hosted. So I'm going to host it on ESXi001, followed by next. I'm going to select the disk I want it to be stored on, followed by next. I want to customize the operating system. And I want to power on the virtual machine after creation, followed by next. This is where we actually select the customized guest OS. So I'm going to choose that specification that I specified earlier, followed by next, followed by finish. So we can actually already see here that the virtual machine is starting to be cloned and starting to be deployed. And depending upon how fast your underlying storage system is, um, if you've got a flash based, flash based storage system, um, this can be incredibly quickly. Um, you know, 15 seconds to 30 seconds if you're doing thin deployments or if you're basically using uh, NAS is, is, is not not uncommon. Um, so there's an awful lot of um, can be gained by letting vCenter server do all the heavy lifting and deploy templates for you uh, that make your life a lot quicker. Uh, in you don't have to basically use ISOs uh, and manually install an operating system anymore. Um, so I'm just going to have a little look that I got the domain name right. So ee-lab.com, that's our domain controller. And we're currently deploying um, our current virtual machine. So I'm just going to disappear. I need to go and feed the cats because they're running a mock here. And uh, I'm not going to come back shortly. And uh, hopefully uh, the virtual machine is going to be uh, deployed, uh, powered on, uh, joined to the domain uh, all automatically without me having to do anything at all. So I will be back shortly. OK, I'm back. I forgot to wear my VMware Christmas hat. I do apologize. So here it is. OK, well, that wasn't too long. 
Um, so one of the things I wanted to show you very quickly is you can see that the DNS chain DNS name has changed to ee-lab-dc2. So the machine name remain has been changed. Um, obviously, it's in the ee-lab.com DNS because we use that DNS suffix. Um, and if I just actually try to log on to the machine, then you can clearly see now that it says sign into the ee-lab. So this machine is currently a member of the domain. And if I actually log in with a domain user ID uh, rather than the local user ID, then here we are um, logged in um, to. Now, I do apologize. Um, as I said to you, um, I was supposed to go and feed the cats, but uh, the um, it started uh, started up so quickly that domain join and the reboots and everything from the template that I've not actually basically had a chance to uh, to pop downstairs to actually basically feed the cats this evening. So so Sylvia has just come to remind me that she's not been fed yet, and um, she, she's just passed past the camera. Anyway, so. Um, that's all I've actually got to show you in what has turned into be a, a very short Hancock's VMware half hour of about uh, 20 minutes. Um, we're 14 days from the big day. Um, this is going to be my last Experts Exchange video for 2022. Um, so um, all there is for me to say is wherever you are in the world, uh, Merry Christmas uh, from me. Um, and if you don't um, celebrate Christmas, then happy holidays to you um, and a prosperous new year for 2023. Um, so please come back in 2023 uh, whilst we continue to do these videos, uh, tutorials on uh, VMware vSphere 8. And I noticed, I think only in the last couple of days, uh, VMware have now issued uh, version 8.0a. Um, of ESXi. So once again, thanks very much for watching. Watching. Merry Christmas. Goodbye.